Hey guys, welcome. My name is David Breer and welcome to Fintech Insider On Air episode 36. Last week we had Megan Kaywood on, really, really great show. If you want to check that out, head over to the 11FS Periscope or YouTube channel. Um, but this week we've got a really, really interesting show. We have the guys on from Plaid. How's it going, guys? Great. Yeah, good to be Happy here. Happy to be here. Uh, I think before we probably get in and give you guys a, a chance to give a bit of an overview, a bit of an explanation of uh, what you do, um, some really interesting stats. So we've seen 10 billion transactions being uh, going through your platform. That is insane. Like when you start talking about scale, that's a pretty big opportunity there. I also saw that you've integrated 15,000 banks already. So you guys kind of are messing around, you know, like you, you seem like nice guys, but you're clearly like <laughs> hustling and getting stuff done as well. And you're currently valued over two and a half billion, which is pretty impressive for a, quite a young company. I think we've been putting in the work, yeah. <laughs> but maybe if we start for, for the guys who maybe don't know you uh, specifically in terms of your company, do you want to do an introduction to your both of you and then also give an overview of what Plan does? Yeah, sure. I guess uh, I can go first. So I'm Keith Gross. Uh, I'm the international lead here at Plaid based in London. Um, and basically to give a, a brief introduction to Plaid and then I'll, I'll turn it over to Zach. Our goal is simple. We're here to make money easier for everyone. Um, our mission is to empower innovation and financial services. And we're a platform uh, with an API that allows users to connect their bank accounts to other financial technology apps. Mm -hmm. Um, and so with that, I guess, turn it over to Zach. Yeah, and uh, I'm Zach Lambert. I'm on the growth team at Plaid here in the UK. Uh, and my job is to help clients use Plaid. So what should they do with it? What can they do with it? Asking a lot of questions, things like that. Hmm. So in terms of, I guess, of the purpose of the platform and its origin, like where is where did the company come from? Why, why was it started? Uh, I mean, you've got not nice local accents right now. So like, where are you guys, where are you guys <laughs> from originally? I figured it was better than faking it. Uh, <laughs> I'm originally from the East Coast, but then I spent many years in the Bay Area before that. Yeah, so I'm from the Midwest. Uh, and Keith and I both moved over here in April to, again, ask a bunch of questions, try to figure out how FinTech works and where we can be useful. Great. And, and Plaid itself, where was it founded? Uh, it was founded in a mix of Atlanta and New York. So both of our co-founders um, were friends in consulting. Uh, moved to New York to start something in fintech, very quickly discovered that they had something interesting after like some trial and failure, uh, and then moved out to San Francisco to start Plaid. So since then, we've opened offices in New York, Salt Lake, London, and Amsterdam, uh, and are trying to grow all of them. Very good. Yeah, and if you think about a little bit of the, the founding story there, they were originally trying to build their own fintech application and actually ended up having trouble getting access and, and onboarding users and things and realize that there's a need for tools to enable innovation. And that's what really led to the genesis of Plaid. Mm. Well, it's amazing how many starts, I mean, Stripe's a very similar origin story, you know, being in a situation right. where they were trying to do something for themselves and then ended up building a behemoth of a payments company. So, I mean, there's a tried and tested sort of uh, start with one thing, end up do, doing another. And, and like I say, given the amount of banks that you guys are integrating and the amount of transactions that are going through, it's, it's gone pretty well. Yeah, I mean, I think to use the, the San Francisco lingo, like we're building shovels. We're trying to enable people who are out here um, building their own startups and their own uh, innovation. Yeah, and that's a really important point. So when we say that like we care a lot about helping two-person companies build things on top of financial infrastructure, there is a very specific two-person company that started seven years ago that we helped of Zach and William, uh, and we've never really lost that. So. Yeah, and how have you guys found, I guess, the transition from uh, US fintech uh, scale up of a US company to uh, global expansion? I mean, I, I think we've had to come into it with a lot of questions, right? Like we came here and we had a theory of the case and how Plaid worked because we've built 15,000 connections in the US and have a lot of startups using us. Um, but things work differently here. So like the, the sort of founding example of that is if you go on Plaid Link in the US and you search first, you will find that there are a lot of banks in the US that start with first, like probably 50 to 100. Uh, so just the long tail being smaller here. Um, and so then- Sort of de denotes the name of not having first, doesn't it? You know? Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, if somebody's gonna be more first than the other one? Like right, if you try to get into like a fuzzy matching situation on bank names in the US, you will very quickly run into a problem. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. So, uh, I mean, what specific, I guess, changes have you seen? Like, how, how does the UK ecosystem stack up against the, the world that you were in in the US? Yeah, I mean, so regulatory, very different. Um, everybody knows about PSD2 and what will be taking place very shortly. Um, and then from a 
from a product differentiation perspective, features work really well as products in the US and sort of expand from there. Mm -hmm. So things like Acorns and Bridget uh, and Drop do one thing really, really well. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they sort of look to their customer base to figure out what they should build next. And you know, you look up and Square now has Square Cash and Square Capital and they're a lot bigger. Um, in the UK, it seems like the banks have started from sort of a top-down approach. So Monzo and Revolut build basically everything you need to do in your financial life. Um, and when we think of what we would like Plaid to do, it's enable people to live their best financial lives and sort of make their current account a routing hub for everything else they need to do. Mm -hmm. um, and those are just sort of two different approaches. Hmm. And, and I think also just the, the schema and rails and all of that is obviously very different here. So in the US, for example, account funding is done via debit polls on ACH. And here it's users pushing funds. And what that created is in the US, there's a big market for third party P2P, for example, things like Venmo. You just don't see as much of that here because it's just a different ecosystem. Yeah, I mean, faster payments is a thing, isn't it? Right, and actually exactly. being in a situation where you can rely upon those things sort of yeah. changes the dynamic to a certain degree, doesn't it? Ex definitely. And, and even the definition of what things are sort of sensitive and confidential is different. Uh, it's like you will give someone your account and sort code so they can push money. Uh, on an onboarding process for a bank here when we first moved over and we're trying to sort of explore the landscape and use the features at basically every Neobank, mm -hmm. um, I was having trouble providing proof of identity for my US residency. And uh, someone from customer support just emailed me and said like, oh, just provide me your social security number over email. <laughs> I was like, I'm not sure that's something people do in the US. Um, yeah, I mean, different levels of uh, sensitivity to those different things mm -hmm. definitely sort of applies, doesn't it? I mean, how are you guys seeing, I guess, the open banking as a, as a bit of a revolution here actually has quite an interesting sort of impact, I guess, from people's uh, openness to, to use products like yours as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I think we share that principle of open access and providing consumers with the power to take advantage of their data and access new financial mm -hmm. services. And that way we're really aligned with, with where open banking is heading. I think, as you can see with the some of the 18 month and six month delays in implementation, I think it's still just the beginning of a journey, to be honest, with mm -hmm. open banking. Um, and, but we're excited to be part of that empowering access and um, enabling all sorts of innovation down the road alongside open banking. It's definitely, um, you know, I can say as, as somebody who, I mean, our company 11FS has used your product to build something that we're building in the US right now. Yeah. So we've integrated you into our platform, Foundry, and actually that the multiplier that that can give us with that access to that data to provide a service to the customers. It's Again, it's Stripe one because it was so easy, so simple to integrate with that actually it was the, the default choice for people when they were going about doing payments integrations. Mm -hmm. I really see you guys kind of nailing it in that same way, which is you know the, the simplicity in which our engineers were able to pick up your uh, access to your systems and actually integrate it into mm -hmm. what we're doing was really, really simple. So. Yeah, and I, and I think to, to dig into the Stripe example a little bit, they just launched a corporate card, I believe yesterday, mm. that's basically based on using cash flow through Stripe to provide a corporate card to companies that may not have been able to apply for one in traditional methods. And I think that's a great example of the types of thing that Plaid also enables where you can use data to actually provide access to better financial services for people that couldn't access them before. Mm. And that's, that's at its heart what we're all about. Yeah, I mean, even getting information from like one segment of a bank to another segment of a bank is historically a difficult process. Like cash flow analysis is easy intra-bank, you would think, but in practice, it's not the case. So Stripe, Shopify, Square Capital launches um, have all been really, really successful just built on actually looking at the data available for the customers they have, uh, which was a novelty pretty recently. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the the other step that we're now taking um, with expanding to Canada and the UK and, and beyond is to be able to help take that access and allow it to help startups that have global ambitions where it's easy for them to expand and grow with us. Again, with the same basis of we want to provide the tools to enable the best experiences for consumers down the line. Excellent. Well, I, I mean, I was joking uh, before we started on this, but you guys have acclimatized really well. Like the <laughs> the swag that uh, these guys give out as their company are pretty phenomenal. They started with rainwear and umbrellas, which if you're moving to London, fits in really, really well, I have to say. So are you, are you planning like a, a winter range? Like, I think that would be good. They've yeah, been extremely the useful. The yeah. coats are on back order. Are they, we'll bring them out. Yeah, we, we have some thicker. Uh, uh, some thicker rain jackets coming for when it gets a little colder. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think can... one of the best examples of a like acclimatizing here though is just people pronounce our company name differently and we're, we're just to get used Look, to that. Yeah. I mean, we're flexible, we're scrappy. <laughs> if you call us played, we'll answer to played. <laughs> you know, my, my American colleague Sam, Sam Wall, if you're if you're watching, he mm -hmm. says played. 
And I'm like, really? dude, it's, he, it's definitely How long was he here? <laughs> well, that, yeah. I mean, he lived in Yorkshire for a while. Okay. The accent gets quite confused. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> but it's, it's great. It's great to see you guys come over here. You know, there's lots to talk about. I mean, UK fintech is very much kind of exporting to the US right now. You know, European yeah. fintech more broadly, you know, N26 and mm-hmm. Monzo and Starlink. So it's great to see that actually that uh, shift is kind of happening in other spaces as well. But uh, congratulations on all the success. And uh, I mean, long may it last, right? Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. I mean, I think it's it's ultimately going to be better for everyone to have more and more of this cross-Atlantic competition yeah. happening. And so I think we're excited to, to see a lot of these great fintechs here in the UK expand into the US as well. I That's think we have a lot to learn from them here too. So we're super excited to work with them. Great. All right. Well, I mean, where can people learn out more about the product? I think plaid.com is a great place to start. We have all of uh, our product pages up there. You can sign up for API keys, read our docs. If you want to look at the UK specifically, you can go to plaid.co.uk. Um, and, and that's a great place for us to be able to answer any information and um, you know, put everything up for all the developers out there to, to take a look. Yeah, okay. Please give us feedback. That's what we're looking for. <laughs> well, take, take those guys seriously on it. So if they want to give you specific feedback with you guys, where can people find out more about you specifically? Yes, they can find me on Twitter at ZC Lambert, L-A-M-B-E-R-T, uh, or just email me at zlambert at plaid.com. Yeah, and similarly, I'm on Twitter at, at means to meaning, uh, or you can email me at keith at plaid.com as well. I'm always happy to get feedback. I think the, uh, the other thing is we are still growing as well, so check out plaid.com slash careers. Um, we're always looking to hire great people, both in the U.S. and here in the U.K. Fantastic. Great plug. All right. As for me, you can find me over on at David Beer on Twitter. Uh, thanks very much for joining us this week. If you want to get anybody else on the show that you think would be a really interesting startup to bring on, uh, hit us on uh, podcast at 11fs.com and give us any feedback on there as well. Thanks very much for joining in this week. Talk to you next week.